Hello, everyone. This is your old chief quizzer himself, Joe Kelly, presenting America's Famous Quiz Kids. <laughs> well, our question box today is chock full of interesting questions, and here is number one. Judging by its lifespan, what mammal could tell us about the landing of the pilgrims if it were able to talk? And while you and our listeners are thinking about that one, we'll have roll call. First, Joel. I'm Joel Kupperman. I'm 14 years old and I'm a junior at Roosevelt High School. Patrick. I'm Patrick Owen Conlon. I'm 13 years old and in the fall I'll be a freshman at Calumet High School in Chicago. Little Frankie. Thank you, Vanna Plug. I'm six years old, and I'm in Winby at the Mount Vernon School, Chicago, Illinois. And we welcome back to our classroom, Brenda. I'm Brenda Plug, and I'm six years old. I'm in High Park, Girls School, Chicago, Illinois. And Lonnie. I'm Lonnie Lonnie. I'm 14 years old, and will be a sophomore at Main Township High School in Park Ridge, Illinois. Fine. Now, can you quiz kids after that first question? Judging by its lifespan, what mammal could tell us about the landing of the pilgrims if it were able to talk? Three hands up. Lonnie's hand was first. Well, I believe the, the giant tortoise is the only animal that lives that long, but I'm not sure that that's a mammal. It is not a mammal, I see. Lonnie. Well, then I would say the elephant. Well, no, no. Now, wait a minute. Joel? Well, I was thinking of the elephant, too. You were thinking of the elephant? And, Tam, what were you well, going I was going to think of the elephant right off. Oh, well, uh, this is a mammal. All right, we give up on this? Oh, boy, missed the first one. The whale is the answer. The lifespan of a whale is about 500 years. Uh huh. And the pilgrims, of course, landed in 1620. It'll be a difference of 330 years. Well, you know, we can't get them all. Now, let's see what we can do here. Oh, by the way, before we get along with more questions, I'm going to give you uh, kids rather a novel assignment to work on during the program. I'll expect you to pay close attention to the regular questions, as usual, and work on this on the side at the same time. Now then, I'm going to hand out to each of you a handful of alphabet soup noodles. And you'll get a pile put right on your desks. And with these noodles, you are to use your noodles and see how many song titles you can spell out using these letters. And in an emergency, you can use an M upside down for a W or vice versa. And I'll call on you later on in the program. And uh, Brenda and Frankie, now, since you two tiny tots haven't had spelling yet, I'll give you a special assignment a little bit later on. All right, kids, now, in the meantime, we'll uh, get along with uh, more questions. And by the way, this next question, I would say, is uh, really out of this world. If you were to take a rocket ship to the planet Pluto... What other planets might you wave to as you passed? Now, try to name them in order, uh, in the order in which you would pass them, if at all possible. Frankie? Well, you might pass Mars and Jupiter and Saturn and Uranus and Neptune, and you won't pass Pluto because you would land on that. That would be your destination right in order. Now, how do you like that for six years old? What do you know about that? Well, Frankie, that was just fine and dandy. Now, just for fun, kids, uh, we're going to suppose certain characters in opera use the language of tough guys. If you heard something like this in an opera, what character would be talking to uh, what character? <laughs> I uh, will uh, try to be the tough guy. I'm going to get my hand and warm aside here. <clears throat> All right, listen to the first one now. Look, Pop, I'm going to make you sing like a canary or my moniker ain't Siggy. Sure, I fell for your kid, and then you put the heat on her. What do you think she is, a hot dog? Now get this. You're going to show me the way through that flame without an asbestos suit, and I ain't kidding. See? Lonnie? Well, that's from the ring operas. It would be Siegfried would be the one. And moniker was Siggy. So who would be talking to whom now? Well, uh... I'm not sure who would be talking to whom. Well, all right. Let's Siegfried, see. We want to hands up, Joel. He would be talking to Woden. That's right. About Sieg uh, Brunhild. That's right. Siegfried would be talking to Wotan in the opera Siegfried. Now then, uh, how about this next one? Who would be talking to who in this case? Look, babe, did you have to follow me here? You better scram, beautiful. It's later than you think. They're going to seal up the joint and you'll be stuck here for life. Don't be a dope. <laughs> 
Pat? Well, I think that'll be from Aida, and I think it would be Radames. He uh, was sealed in a tomb, and Aida, his uh, sweetheart, came to die with him. That's right, Patrick, my boy. Very, very good, kids. Now, here's our next question. You know, a number of the presidents of the United States have had interesting hobbies. You are going to hear clues that should suggest three of these hobbies, and you are to identify the president in each case. And the title of the song you will hear, our organist, Lou Webb, play, will give you the clue to the first one. All right, Uncle Lou. <laughs> Well, that's a hunting we will go, and one of uh, the uh, uh, George Washington was a fox hunter. Well, are you sure that's a uh, hunting we will go? Could it be something else, too? <laughs> Let's see, Pat. Oh, that might be a farmer in the Dell. Well, that's what I... And a lot of uh, presidents were farmers. George Washington, of course, could go for the answer there, too. Uh, George Washington? Uh -huh. That's very good. That's right. Now, the second one is represented by the sound effects you will hear. Well, that's big game hunting. That was Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt is right. Now then, here's the last one, and I'll try to give you the clue to this one. I've I've practiced on uh, well, I've practiced all week on this one. Now, just uh, don't go away, anybody. <laughs> to get that little fancy touch in there, see? All right, Patrick. Well, that'll be the Missouri Waltz, and of course, that would be our president, uh, President Harry right. Truman. <laughs> All right, kid. Now, let's see what we have next. Oh, here's, uh, here's uh, one about a musician. Uh, a musician who went on a tour of the United States, and he sent his wife a note from the various places he visited. But instead of describing his trip, he merely scribbled a bit of music on each note to uh, suggest where he had been. Let's see if you kids can trace his trip. You must get two out of three on this. Now, the first message was music from an opera by Puccini. Lonnie. The girl of the Golden West. So? He'd be in the West. That's right. Now, the second letter contained music from a suite by Ferdy Graffay. Joe? That'd be Grand Canyon, sweet. So? He'd be in the Grand Canyon, Colorado. <laughs> All right, fine. Now, the last letter contained music from a popular song by Paul Dresser. Lonnie? Didn't he write Marilyn, My Marilyn? No. No. What, uh, what did he write? What popular song did he write? We give up on this one? Well, he wrote The Banks of the Wabash, so... Pat? Well, you'd be in Indiana. Indiana, that's right, oh, or in river. Illinois, too. Mm -hmm. Now, friends, it's certainly a great honor to be able to hear a message from our distinguished guest, the Honorable Mr. John W. Snyder, Secretary of the Treasury of the United States. The Quiz Kids program has been setting a good example for more than 10 years by providing its young stars with financial awards in the form of United States savings bonds. Now your program is carrying that good example into a second phase. Bonds awarded to the Quiz Kids 10 years ago are now maturing. And I'm informed that one of the original Quiz Kids, Charles Swartz, Jr., who appeared in your very first program, has decided to reinvest the money from his matured bond in a new United States savings bond. Charles is here in the studio today and I want to congratulate him on his wise decision. Investing in U.S. savings bonds is a good way to provide funds for your future. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Well, Charles, it's very nice to have the Secretary of the Treasury talk to you, isn't it? It certainly is, Mr. Kelly. Well, now, Charles, Mr. Arnold J. Rowan... Uh, direct, Illinois director of the Savings Bond Division will present you with your new bonds. Well, I'm very happy to be here today, Charles, to give you back three for one, four for one. You see, you invested in a bond ten years ago on the 28th day of June, 1940. 
Today, for your one bond, you are getting two bonds plus some of Uncle Sam's money in return. And I'm very happy to be here today to give it to you. And while I'm on the air, I'd like to tell our audience that during the duration of the Quiz Kids program for 10 years, they have given away as prizes to Quiz Kids over $300,000 in savings bonds. I want to congratulate them. I want to congratulate you on your choice of reinvesting in another United States savings bonds. Congratulations and best wishes. Thank you very much, Mr. Rowan. Uh, Charles, uh, before you leave, uh, I wonder if you'd tell us briefly some of the things you've been doing in the 10 years since you left the Quiz Kids. In 1942, I worked on a farm. And in 1943, after finishing high school, I entered the college of the University of Chicago, where I received my Bachelor of Arts degree in 1945. Wonderful. Then I served for about two years as a cadet midshipman in the United States Merchant Marine Cadet Corps, much of my time being spent at sea. Last month, I graduated from Harvard University Law School. Now I am studying for my Illinois bar examination, which I will take in September. Also, I'm looking for a job. You say you're looking for a job. That's right, Mr. Kelly. That's what I thought you said, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Charles, I see you've been a very, very busy young man. And from all of your records, I know you're doing splendidly, and we're all very proud of you, as we are of all the quiz kids. And I hope you'll pay us a visit uh, real uh, soon again, and the very, very best of luck to you, Charles. <laughs> Well, now back to more schoolwork. Let's see what you quiz kids can do with this Bible question. What characters in the Bible could have been members of an orchestra? Brenda. David could have been because David he with played, his harp, uh huh. Because he played the harp That's for right. the King Solomon. For I mean, for King Saul, who was the first king. Uh huh. That's that's right. And uh, Lonnie. Well, uh, Joshua's men blew the trumpets. Oh, sure. Uh, were you going to say that, Pat? Yeah, I was. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. Can we think of any others? Well, all right. Let's get along to this uh, next question, which I think is uh, a doozer. Uh, this next question is going to be a race against the clock. So you'll have to work fast on this one. I'm going to read you a math question. And from the time I say go, you will have just 60 seconds to solve the problem. I uh, have an alarm clock here, which will ring at the end of 60 seconds. And uh, so you are to try to give me the answer before you hear the alarm. Now, uh, who wants to tackle this, by the way? Oh, I knew Joel would want to get in on this. Of course, you have to do this without the help of paper and pencil. Now, here's the problem. A teacher asked, John, how long did it take you to solve that problem? John replied, I did it between 4 and 5 o'clock. When I began, the hands of the clock were together, and when I finished, they were opposite each other. How long did John take to do the problem? The alarm was set to go. One, two, three, go. Well, uh, let X equal the time, the, hour, the distance the hour hand traveled... Uh, while he was solving the tra problem, then the, uh, let's see, the minute hand would travel 12 times as much. So that would be 12x. And uh, the uh, minute hand would also travel 30 more because it would be between the 10 and the 11. And from the 4 to 10, that's 6 times 5 to 30. So 30 plus x would, uh, let's see, 30 plus x would uh, be uh, equals 12x. 11x equals 30. And x equals 2 and 8 elevenths. So be, uh, the hour hand had traveled 2 and 8 elevenths, and the minute hand had traveled 32 and 8 elevenths. 32 and 8 elevenths is absolutely right, Joel, and you beat the clock. <laughs> yes, sir, you sure did. <laughs> That's really wonderful, Joel. Yes, sir. Good timing, too, by the way. <laughs> now, let's see what we have here. Oh, what Boston Red Sox player has not only got to first base, but is making a sensation out of it? Patrick? Well, that would be Walt Ropo, uh, the Boston Red Sox first baseman, who should uh, nominee for the Rookie of the Year. He's That's right, Patrick. Him. Now then, we... Oh, excuse me, there's the alarm clock. I forgot to turn it off. <laughs> if anybody happens to be sleeping, well, I pay no attention. Yeah. <clears throat> now, let's see. Um, this uh, question is on uh, nature, and um, 
The, you see, the monarch and the viceroy butterflies look enough alike to be twins. How can you tell them apart, Frankie? Well, um, well, the viceroy, I think, is a little bit smaller than the monarch, and the monarch is bitter tasting to the bud, and the viceroy is sweet tasting, but they look so much alike that the birds think that the monarch is, that the viceroy is the bitter tasting monarch. That's uh, according to the bird, yes. <laughs> All right, fine, Frankie, fine. Now, this next question takes a lot of imagination, kids, and you listeners at home may enjoy trying to take up answers along with the quiz kids. If an ear of corn could give advice as to how to be popular in society, what might he say if he used phrases associated with him? For instance, he might say, uh, uh, don't uh, stalk around. <laughs> Now, then, let's see if you kids can think of any. Lonnie? Don't tell corny jokes. <laughs> and, now, there's nothing personal to that, is there, Lonnie? No. All right. Go ahead, Evia. Uh, use your ears more than your mouth. <laughs> Fine, Joel. Oh, uh, don't go against the grain. Be a colonel in the army. Well, say, those are two very good ones. Patrick? Keep your ears open. Keep your ears open. Uh-huh. Can we think of any others? All right, Pat. Don't go around with the right stock of people. Oh, and Lonnie? Don't be yellow. Don't be yellow? <laughs> well, those were all very, very good. Now tell me this, kids. What simple thing that seems easy for others seems hard for you to do? Who would like to start this off? What simple thing that seems easy for others seems difficult for you to do? Uh, Joel? Well, there are a lot of mechanical things that seem tough for me. Well, name one. Well, uh... Oh, like uh, fixing, uh, straightening the handlebars on my bike. Oh, you find that very difficult, huh? Well, I generally don't get far in it. I, I have one of my boyfriends, and I help him out with certain things, and he helps me out with those things. Oh, he's a handlebar specialist, I see. <laughs> Lonnie? Well, I have a lot of trouble doing, making anything out of wood. A lot. I know a lot of my friends find it very easy. I can't saw straight or... You can't saw straight? <laughs> That Things like funny that. When you say it that way, don't you? I can't saw straight. Well, <laughs> all right, Lottie. Patrick. Well, I have a lot of trouble measuring, and I remember one incident when we have a big, we did have a big bulletin board at Fort Dearborn, in the room I was in, and um, teacher would give me a simple job, you know, like keep the letters straight, and uh, they'd be all over the place. Oh, uh, they would, eh? Other people could do it just like that. I don't know. <laughs> How about you, Brenda? Well, um. Well, it seems very difficult for me to um, just learn things right, right when someone tells me once, it's hard to keep it in mind. Oh, I see. Well, you, got, you probably have a lot on your mind. And, uh, <laughs> Frankie? Well, I think it would be hard for, for me to um, get gas out of coal, you know. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait just a minute. Uh, I think it would be hard for me to, me, uh, to make a microphone. I think it would be hard Fra for me... Uh, uh, Frankie, let me have that again. What did you say? I think it would be hard for me to make a microphone because um, I really don't... Is that don't... what you said first? <laughs> I thought you said something about coal. Well, um... <laughs> Well, you know, I think it would be hard for me to get gas out of coal. Oh, yes, no. that's what I thought you said. And then I think it would be hard for me to make a microphone because I don't know how, um, just how to make it so it can go to, to all through to the, every house where I'm, may, where the program that broadcasts through my microphone is going to go to. I think that would be hard. Well, say, you know... <laughs> That, uh, that does sound very, very difficult. Uh-huh. Yes, well, all right, uh, kids. Well, uh, say, Frankie, he, he's uh, certainly, uh, he's, uh, he would get a little bit mixed up on a microphone, wouldn't he? <clears throat> well, now, our next lesson, uh, let's see. Oh, by the way, I uh, almost forgot. I, uh, you've been working on that assignment that I gave you kids at the start of the program. You were to use the letters from Alphabet Soup, put on your desks, and spell out as many song titles as you could. So let's hear what you have. Uh, Lonnie, do you want to start? Well, I have Again, Why, Never, I Love You, Moon Love, Who, Rag Mop, Together, and Listen. Well, what do you know about that? That was a whole raft of them, uh huh? And, uh, Joel, how about you? Well, I just got Who and Mammy. Who and Mammy? <laughs> 
<laughs> this is a lot of fun. Patrick? Well, I got Mandy, Ma, Billy Boy, Marie. I got Mary, too, and who also. It's well, very good easy. for you. Well, those were all very good. And now, Frankie and Brenda, you remember I said that because you are tiny tots and haven't learned to spell yet, that I had a very special assignment for you, and here it is. To make up for your not taking part in this spelling question, I'm going to ask Brenda to entertain us with a little recitation, uh, whichever she may choose, uh, uh, to give us. And uh, you, Frankie, uh, you can play something on your saxophone. I, I asked your mother to bring it to the classroom, and I think we'd all like to hear and, uh, well, like to see what you can do with it. Now, let's hear from Brenda first. Brenda, have you got a little recitation for us? Yes, I would like to say a little poem, sort of a lullaby, from Alice in Wonderland, that the Duchess sings to our little baby. Oh, fine. Well, all right, now, everybody real quiet. Speak roughly to your little boy and beat him when he sneezes. He only does it to annoy because he knows it teases. I speak severely to my boy. I beat him when he sneezes. He only does it to annoy because he knows it teases. Well, wonderful, isn't that, Bandy? And now, Frankie, uh, let's, uh, what do you want to play on your little saxophone? Oh, I could play Santa Man Well, where are you going to play it? Uh, you, maybe you better stand back there, uh, close to your microphone at your desk. That's it. Now, you're going to play Sentimental Me? Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, well, you get the mouthpiece all set there. You got a reed in it and everything? Why don't you give us just, a uh, one toot to see if uh, you're all set there? Just toot her once there. Oh, yes, fine, fine. That's how I tune it up with B. Oh, you tune it up with B, huh? Yeah. Well, all right. I think uh, you'll be all right. So uh, let's have sentimental me. Frankie's only six years old, and I can't play anything like that on the saxophone, and, well, I'm not going to tell you how old I am. <laughs> and if you didn't play it so soon, I thought I could play the whole song, because I know that, too. Oh, you know the whole song. <laughs> I see. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, inasmuch as you just gave us half of it, maybe we can have you play the other half uh, on some other program. Would that be all right for you? Yeah. All right, fine. Well, now somebody take his saxophone so he can sit down. We have more questions here. And that was very, very fine, Frankie. Yes, sir, for six years old, that was just dandy. Now, our next lesson deals with English literature. You kids uh, are to identify the Shakespearean play in which you find each of these quotations about rain. And to make this really difficult, you must get all three parts. Here's the first one. What play? It droppeth. As the gentle rain from heaven. Patrick. Well, that would be the Merchant of Venice. Right, absolutely. Uh huh. And here's the next one. When shall we three meet again in thunder, lightning, or in rain? Brenda. Macbeth. Macbeth is correct. And here's the last one. Is there not rain enough in the sweet heavens to wash it white as snow? Joel. That's from Hamlet. From Hamlet. That is absolutely right. Nice going. You got all three parts. Now. What good luck tokens might you find in the country? Can you children think of some good luck tokens? Patrick? Well, say, you'd find practically all of them there. You might find a rabbit's foot. Rabbit's foot. Four-leaf clover. Four-leaf clover. Uh, incidentally, we found one in our backyard just yesterday. Of course, that isn't in the country. <laughs> what do you mean, a four-leaf clover? That's right. Well, what do you know about that? Sure, and, it wasn't uh, a shamrock, me. No, it wasn't yeah. the shamrock. And uh, <laughs> you might also find a horseshoe. Horseshoe, uh-huh. And uh, can we think of any others? I'm thinking about one that we, uh, well, we used to hang it up on the wall after <clears throat> we were through with our supper and wait for it to dry out. Good luck, old oh. boy. Lonnie. Wishbone. Wishbone, that's what I was thinking about. Now, here's our next question, and um, it's uh, about the uh, FBI. 
The FBI intercepted a message of two words. Each word was the first syllable of the last name of a Brooklyn Dodger baseball player. The, uh, the uh, players, rather. The first names of the two players are Jackie and Dan. What was the message, Joel? Well, that would be Jackie Robinson and... Uh... Dan Bankhead, probably, so there would be Rob Bank. Rob Bank, that's a boy. Now, can you tell whether each of these musical instruments is played by being blown, plucked, struck, or what? First, a glockenspiel. Bonnie. It's struck. With, uh, that's right. A hammer. With, with hammer, uh-huh. Uh, ocarina. Bonnie? It's blown. That's right, it's a wind instrument, played by blowing into it. And, uh, balalaika. Bonnie? That's plucked. That's right, it has strings. strings. Good boy, Lonnie. Now tell me this. What radio or movie star suggests these geographical features? A body of water. Patrick. That'd be a lake, Veronica Lake. Veronica Lake is right. A coastline. A movie star. Lonnie. Dinah Shore. Dinah Shore. Why, Shore, yeah. And a certain cape. A certain cape, Pat. Oh, that might be Lena Horn. Well, that's very... Or Bob good. Hope. Bob, I was thinking of Bob Hope. Lena Horn, very good. Now, I'd like to have a little discussion, kids, yeah? Uh, something we're all interested in. Since summer weather has finally arrived, just what ways can you suggest for keeping cool? Frankie? Oh, well, yeah, my dress and silk because thread is better for winter and silk is better for summer because silk is a little bit cooler than thread. You... So you might dress in silk to keep cool. You recommend that we dress in silk. <laughs> I see. Mm -hmm. that's, that's for the men folks, too, Frankie? What? Uh, for for uh, us? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> so you can keep it? awfully cool because the wind can get through that. Yeah. <laughs> and the silk itself is kind of cool, too. Oh, I did say so. Oh, my, our time is up. Time certainly goes by fast. Well... That old school bell means the end of class for today. And in just a few seconds, kids, we'll have your report cards to see who will be back next Sunday. In the meantime, friends, I wish to point out to all you listeners that despite the fact that there are more graduate nurses in service today than ever before, the ever-increasing needs for nursing personnel have created a demand for still more nurses. Hospital and health facilities are continuing to expand. As a result... Countless opportunities are open to the young woman who becomes a graduate nurse. And I hope all qualified young girls who are interested in this interesting career of nursing will go to their nearest hospital and inquire about training. Well, let's see. Now, here are the grades. So let's find out who won today. Remember, whether you win or lose, kids, you will each receive a $100 savings bond for your future education. Now, as a group, you missed one question. That was the first question, remember? And after taking into consideration your age as well as the number of questions you answered correctly, the final report is Patrick is first, Lonnie second, and Joel and little Frankie tied for third. So you four, together with little Harvey Deitch, age seven, will make up our class for next week when we'll expect all you listeners to be with us again. So until next Sunday, then, this is Joe Kelly dismissing the quiz kids. Goodbye, kids. Bye, Mr. Bye, Mr. Kelly. Mr. Kelly. This program was in part transcribed. Quiz Kids is a Lewis G. Collin production. Programs, get your programs here. For your later evening listening pleasure, NBC presents an hour of varied entertainment tonight. First, MC Jack Parr asks those $64 questions on Take It or Leave It. Then comes a change of pace and the Pet Milk Show with Kay Arman and Emil Cote's orchestra. Remember, Take It or Leave It and the Pet Milk Show tonight. Now, Cloak and Dagger is next on NBC.